Welcome back to our video module on mechanics and materials. In our previous problem, we covered a really basic problem where we're applying some sort of load to some bar and we wanted to see how much it stretched. I'd like to throw one little curveball towards this problem. I'm going to apply a second load. We'll call it F. And I'm going to say that F is 10 kilonewtons and it's being applied 200 millimeters from the base of the material. Now what's the total deflection? Today we're going to look at simple problems where we're applying multiple forces to try to understand how materials react in this situation. Before we draw our free body diagram, let's think about this like you're in the material. First, let's imagine you're at the base. Well, now you're going to feel some sort of additional force wanting to stretch you. Not only have force P, you also have force F. And likewise, if you're right here. However, if you're down here, force F, you don't care what's going on down here. This is all part of the reaction force trying to pull you in this direction. And the only thing pushing you down or pulling you down is force P. That's the only thing trying to stretch you. So I know that somewhere right around force F, there's a difference in how the material feels. The way we deal with this is we do two separate free body diagrams. One free body diagram for the white section. These are for the materials that don't feel force F. The second for the materials in the red section. This is basically everything right here. These are for all the materials that feel both force F and force P. With this simple free body diagram, we can identify the deflection due to just load P. Now remember that this length is now not the total length, but just the length of this sample, which is 500 millimeters. So we plug in our numbers. So the deformation due to this stretching The deformation that we would see, say, right here is 0.29 meters, uh, sorry, 0.29 millimeters. But this isn't the total deformation. There's also going to be deformation due to this area right here, due to the upper section. This is the additional load that we've included. Let's scroll down in green. Let's do the free body diagram of the upper section. We have both the force F in addition, we also have the force P. As a result, we have some sort of reaction force. We'll just say FR. So we now see that in the, towards the base of the material, we have both the force F and the force P trying to stretch the material. Now we can use our deformation equation. So the deformation due to F equals the force 30 times 10 to the third newtons times not 0.5 meters but 0.2 meters is the length and of course the denominator is the same 70 times 10 to the ninth pascals times 500 times 10 to the negative 6 square meters the deformation in this section is 0 0.00017 meters or 0.17 millimeters, which tells us that the final total deformation is the deformation due to the force P plus the deformation due to basically force F and P, which is 0.29 millimeters plus 0.17 millimeters, which equals 0.46 millimeters. So by thinking about what's happening on the inside of the material, we can identify different areas that are experiencing different types of stresses. And if the stresses are different, we know the strains will be different. Join us on our next video when we start playing around with this even more with the geometry of the problem.